Welcome back to the live USC Galen Center matchups we have going here for the League of Legends Championship Playoffs. We're into our semi-final matchups right now. Moscow 5 Ben Q taking on Taipei Assassins. Our first, ma first matchup left Moscow 5 guessing right in the beginning, but they figured out the lane swap really wasn't anything that was going to throw them off guard. Just left Gosu Pepper to do a little roaming early, and then they were able to start off with some really nice barons, some great dragon control, and to continue the match to a W. And this matchup was really two people holding that early game down. It was Diamond preparing for that really big... I mean, it, it was the first blood gank onto Karthus, setting up Genja for a great start. And it was preparing for that counter gank that was a three-man dive in mid. He, he got the first three-man dive for the kill. He was there for the second one, stopped Lil Ball's mistake from getting that kill yeah. on, uh, onto Alex Ish. And so he made some really, really great moves in that isolated lane. Darian, he was left to himself, and he, he did win that. It started out a little bit rough. He was down in minions, but he started picking up kills, and Darian came down and picked up that triple kill at the bottom matchup and that really set them apart because he was such a huge tank that he got so far ahead in items that he was no longer really threatened by anyone on that roster anymore. Yeah. Darian was happy to walk into the front, take the damage, get killed by Kogma, but set up the rest of that fight. So those two members, huge for them. So ladies and gentlemen, throughout the tournament, we've been spotlighting playmakers on each team, figuring out who's doing the best and who's going to give us some great stories throughout this championship. In this next piece, we caught up with Moscow 5 Ben Q as they spoke about you know, Darian, who we were just speaking about, having such a great game as well, and how they harness the power of his unique play style. Let's check it out. Darian Solodo. Darian's the top laner from Moscow 5. Darian's one of these players that have, have always had a bit of an attitude about him. Darian is an absolutely fearsome top laner. Мод мне пофигу и, так сказать, ведет какую-то свою игру. Ну а так, в целом, он адекватный. Если его заставить нужное время и поговорить с ним, то можно ему что-нибудь свое объяснить, заставить его сказать, нормально сыграть. Ну, а так как игрок, он вполне как бы, хорошо нажимает кнопочки. В общем, он нас вполне устраивает. He really just dominates his lane in a lot of situations. The first time we saw Darian on LAN at IAM Kiev, he pretty much forced bans from the enemy team. His top champions are fearsome and can take over a match. Darian is one of those players that he'll either win the lane, in which case Moscow 5 will destroy the opposition, or he'll lose the lane, in which case he'll farm and the rest of the team will just carry on doing what they do, and then he'll come back and they'll destroy the opposition. <laughs> Если, как показала сегодняшняя игра, мы его не особо вразумили, поэтому мы, так сказать, надеемся, что он сам себя вразумит и, и сыграет достойно, попадается, так сказать, не, 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 ну, так сказать, так много не умирать и общем, не подводить нас, не, не делать игру тяжелее, как это было сделано сегодня. Так, ничего мы его не можем сказать. Ну, сделать можно многое. Но команда меня заверяет, что ноль во второй графе – это все, что от меня требуется. So everyone, you can see some caveats in everybody's play, but they love the guy because he can press the buttons really well. He presses the buttons really well. I, I can do that too. If you give me Sona, my face will hit the keyboard and I will just cast every ability perfectly. I want to play with this guy. Number one Sona, NA. Just do this and I'll win all the games. Nice. I'm great. Anyway, we're in a champion select, so we should move on, and our jokes are horrible. All right, guys, let's see what we got for the champion select. Obviously, Mistakes, Blitzcrank, and Diamond Prox, Lee Sin, find themselves on the bench. Yeah, so these guys right away actually starting with similar uh, openings here, I think. that they, Honestly, if I'm TPA, I'm actually pretty satisfied with the champions that came out there. I think there were just a couple of play right. mistakes that really screwed them over. Uh, with the exception of course, and this is exactly what IG did, is like, you know what, you're right. <laughs> Evelyn really is terrifying. We should probably remove that chain. Otherwise, though, I think they're they're happy with everything else. I think they, they have the tools that they can kill off Vayne. For I sure. think th th they're okay with Nunu, or will first pick Nunu not have a big deal. Um, they might actually kill off Yorick, uh, but that's the only other band I could see them going uh, as an adaptation. I think everything else uh, was not too terrifying for them in the, in the matchup so far. 
have to see what they do. That Jace gets banned out as well. A very hard champion to gank. TPA is very good at being able to get out of their lanes. Very slippery. Sona goes out as well. So we said don't try to ban them out, but it looks like they're trying to poke at some of the compositions that would be created by these champions. Yeah, M5, that last ban on Nunu was a reaction to the Sona ban because I think yeah. they, were, they were really thinking about, uh, you know, M5 seems to really, really prioritize first picking that support. You saw them first pick Nunu last game. They were really trying to set themselves up for really, really strong lanes there and left everything else out there. Um, and, and, and so, the, you know, that makes a lot of sense. They're trying to give themselves some, some really good presence overall in that matchup. Um, but, you know, dropping out that final support, you know, Zyra is, of course, still available there. Uh, and, and it looks like they're going to grab Diamond um, up there onto Udyr. Now, he was Singe out last time. It fit the composition pretty well. This time, they're saying, you know what? Leeson's dropped out. They, you know, they, they ran Udyr against SK Gaming very successfully uh, in the European regional. So, of course, no screener to that champion. Might just bring that back out again. We'll have to see what they do. TPA going with somewhat of a safe strategy. Slash will be able to fight for quite some time, that Oriana. Always giving a team quite a bit of utility and movement in a fight to get in or out. Looks like they did like the Yori pick last time. Into that Guardian Angel makes him one of the most formidable champions to be messing with. With the double comeback to life. They do lock in the Kog'Maw. They're looking for that late game damage again, Freak. And they're still waiting for that Darien lock in. It makes a lot of sense. Once they started looking at Yorick, I was like, you know, when you see an Orianna in there, Orianna always screams protect the X. Yeah, she's right. she's an amazingly dominant, you know, mid lane mage, but transitions into a very very powerful support by the end. And it, of course, still has a damage output, but is really good at keeping someone alive. There's a lot of disruption there, some shields, things like that. And as soon as you see Orianna, you've got to start thinking about champions like Kog'Maw or Vayne who are going to really scale throughout that match and require protection, but if they're protected, kill people really, really hard. When M5 looked at Yorick, I was like, well, Yorick is another Protect the X champion. Yorick, in fact, revives X and makes uh, Kog'Maw or Vayne come back to life and keep dominating. Now, Genja was never really killed in that last match, so it didn't matter too much, but you always have that for the backup option and can be really, really powerful. So they've, they've both denied Kog'Maw and given themselves a synergy with Kog'Maw. This had to have been a champion's like adaptation from M5 to pick it so early. We're seeing some champions we have seen recently in some solo queue play as well. And we're going to see it locked in actually as Tarek still staying on the cold side. To Toys picking up Tarek for his team. Little Balls goes for the safe support. Jungler Maokai looking to really set up the ganks instead of getting for himself or his lanes. I don't actually like these picks here from TPA going Maokai, Tarek. I would have really liked to see something like Nocturne, Leona, or Shivana, something like that. You know, Shivana, Orion, an amazing combo as well to open up right. because they already know they're against a crazy fearsome backline with Yorick Cog. Now maybe they're trying to like withstand Yorick clone plus Cog mod damage output with, with Maokai and, and, and it can make sense right if you have you know Tarek up there with the Shatter Aura, 30 armor to nearby teammates, uh, Maokai's Ventral Maelstrom minus 20% damage as long as you're standing in the area, Oriana's Ball grants a shield and bonus armor MR so maybe they're trying to just like tank through the Yorick ultimate and tank through Cog but right. that means they've got to really be able to sit there in a group and not worry about the rest of that damage out but that, that's worrisome because who's going to do the damage on the back line here for TPA um, instead of going for something assassin based right. so uh, it's a little bit risky but you know we'll see what happens here M5 only their support left to pick and they've grabbed Zillion uh, you know, really early on, and that's without a hyperscaling uh, and a hyper carry yeah. top laner. Yeah, I feel like TPA is really building for the team fights here. Every one of those champions that they have is going to be able to assist in that team fight. The Shatter, uh, the Command Shockwave, as well as Little Balls Alt. So that's going to be huge for them. Alex Yish going for that Zillion once again. We did see him play this in the tournament. This is really also a Protect the Cog. They can get him in and out, or well, start with Genja on the initiation, depending on who they choose as well, or Gosu. We'll have to see, you got Vayne being picked out, as well as Mistake holding on that top laner right now. He will be going on to Tarek, but he's going to be choosing out that Nidalee. And yeah, there is that support Zyra here. So this is really, um, <clears throat> it's, it's really, really crazy because you've actually got both team comps going protect the carry. You've got Taipei Assassins, you've got Stanley on Nidalee. It's a heal and an attack speed buff. Tarek, a decent enough front line. Maokai, a front line. Orianna able to, to provide shield and durability. And it's just like, guys, Let's all just put our cards, let's put our eggs in a BB's basket. Let's give him a nice big backpack. Let's hope, let's, let's ride in that and hope he can carry us to victory. Because this is really just a team that says, 
Good luck, baby. We're relying on you. And it's really kind of the same thing here for M5 Ben Q because they didn't go for like. Uh, and, and normally when we see Zillion from Alex right. H, it's because they have Jax or they have Olaf on that lineup. Where you know, yeah, they've got Genja in the back line being awesome as that carry, but they've got a big frontline tank. You know, running in with bonus movement speed, running in with that revive, and just chopping someone to bits. They don't have that. That that Uder's going to be useful. He's going to be disruptive, but it's jungle Uder. He's not going to have crazy farm and be a super beast. And it's York. We saw York last time. Did not need help to be tanky. Right. He just went Guardian Angel, went Trinity Force, was beefy in the front line, didn't require anything special. They don't have Reckless Aggressors here on M5. They've got just a front line that says, don't walk past us, and Kogma in the background killing people. And if he does go, uh, go down and die, they do have Zillion to revive him. So both these teams going a little bit light on damage and saying, okay, BB, okay, Genja, it's on you. Not that I'm, you know, I, I don't know very much for Stanley's top Nidalee play, but I feel like they've forced themselves into a composition that wants to use everything from their champions. And if they don't get that right on Taipei's side, you know, if Nidalee can't get in there, yeah, she's going to want to be able to heal, throw, or throw heals on Vayne, get that attack speed up, get other things happening, get that shield. So I think if those don't correlate for them within this matchup, they're going to find themselves coming up short. A lot of their initiations last game on Moscow 5 that was 100% ready, that Stand United Requiem attack bottom was an amazing engage by Taipei Assassins and would have taken 99% of any professional player off guard, but Moscow 5 on their game is ready for these little things that Taipei Assassins is going to have to do to really get their composition to come to fruition. Yeah, so here we are. The game is started. Let's get ready for game two of the semifinals. This is do or die for Taipei Assassins. You see them on your screen. They are down 0-1. The Galen Center getting prepared for the World Finals to take place on Saturday. Moscow 5 Ben Q. They are one game away from qualifying themselves for that grand final. It's 1-0 in this best of three. They are winning in this matchup. M5 wants this. TPA needs this to stay alive. Getting that sapling pull. There's going to be a little bit of an invasion here as they saw. Darien leaving the bush. They're being very quickly quick on this as well. They have given up the fact that they are now in the jungle. And we're going to see a rotation here. That top side, Moscow 5 is going to start going after the other blue as well. TPA is going back though. Freak, this could completely be a strategy where they push that in there and then they're going to be waiting for this fight. However, they don't know how many members are on the other side, so they're really walking into danger here. Oh, they got spotted. I mean, th their opening play was really, right. really cool. Use saplings, use traps, put some wards down. Make sure you keep track of the opposition. They know their level one is so, so much stronger. And they've got the start on the Gosu Pepper. Gosu not looking good, and this may be the first blood coming out, and BB comes up strong. A full assist to the rest of the team. He's not even going to bother casting the uh, passive. <laughs> Finally deals, uh, shoots it out at the end. No kill there. Great moves by TP. I'm surprised they picked that up, though, because they got spotted by Zillion on the way through mid. Ghosty should have known they were coming across right there, but still a great initiation coming out overall. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at this roster, and yeah, just it took like one flash to make that happen. I mean, really, really good opening. TPA off in the driver's seat. They did get that 400, kill, that 400 gold to BB, but the one thing to remember is he has not spent that gold yet. BB does not have that gold in his pocket. Uh, he has the gold in his pockets, but not on his character. So that level one fight, that top lane is still going to be just the same as always. Great farming help coming in. They're trying to get the junglers through as fast as possible. You see the smite is down onto Diamond, and he holds his smite on Little Ball, so he's going to be looking to get around the jungle and get out quite quickly with that assist. It's going to help him get those items that he needs to keep scaling rather into this game. Looks like we do have Boots Pots going on to Gozu. He blew one of those as he went down, so that lane is going to be aggressive, but they're going to be looking for fast kills and then to get back out. Freak, they have no vision to be safe in that lane. Two minutes and 30 seconds in, another invasion coming in here. The red buff dot, or the dot is still there for Diamond. He can see that they're taking this because the skull is still on the map for him. He looks to go in. He will not be able to get it. It goes to Maokai, and they're going to be forced. No, actually, Little Balls, or he did get that, sorry. Diamond does pick up his red buff. They take out Mistake in this situation. Alex coming up with a kill for himself. Genja forcing himself into this fight, flashing over the wall. And BB rather could pick himself up a kill here. Beautiful shield coming from Orianna. And that makes it 3 to 1 overall. These invasions so strong from TPA. We said they had a better level 1 team. They're happy to invade, and they're just pushing for it. I'm so actually surprised that M5 said, you know what, yeah, let, let's keep fighting you at level 1. Let's please put ourselves in these terrible situations where we're about to get picked off. And that was brutal overall. So much damage dealt back onto them. Poor Gozu Pepper still not even level 2. You know, the rank 1 Strangle Thorns is nice, but not putting out a lot of punishment overall. That was pretty risky. This opening for TPA so, so good.
very scary BB now. Two, zero, and one as Vayne this early in the game. Vayne is a late game carry, but will still put out the pain if given the chance to do so within these early levels. Only four minutes into the game, Gosu trying to throw out the harassment. They know they don't have too much control of that lane, as I said before, with the wards. So they're really trying to push these guys out of lane as much as possible. So if there is a gank, they're not affected by it as much. Zillion, Alex Ish playing the role for everybody on his team, and really everybody is assisting each other right now. And the one thing that M5 needs to do right here is to realize that BB has still not gotten back to lane to buy any items. So he, he, despite all of these kills, despite everything, at this second, he's on equal footing to Genja. The, the, I guess I'd call it the top lane, but those dual lanes there are, are identical right now as far as power is concerned. There's a little bit of experience in the lead, but that's about it. The, the, you know, the golden items, it's a wash right there. And so uh, M5 needs to hold them in lane as long as possible and keep Vayne from buying. The second she buys, she's dominant in lane. These are where the words would come into play. Gosu could find himself out, but he calls the time in his head and says, he feels right for little balls. We've seen him around the jungle. I'm going to time this, sa or this seedling and throw it in the bush. Really throwing little balls off there, but he still has a chance to come around the backside. You can see the cautious play. Mistake a little too aggressive there and really telegraphs this one in. No chance for an attack on that. But they can perfectly zone this lane. You right. look at the minion wave, and actually, it's now actually bigger on TPA side, so it will push to the turret, and so M5 can kind of sit on their heels and wait. They won't lose too many minions if they just simply wait in the background and let it push to their turret. Because the wave is so much larger on the other side, you're not expecting to uh, have your minions really pick off too much in that wave, and they'll be pretty safe overall. Alex is getting a little harassment done to him, but Diamond Prox perfectly there as he makes his way through the jungle. Really not what TPA needs. A huge attack onto BB out top. He pushes back Genja. Great mechanics to really push out the damage that's going to be coming at him in the fight. Stanley putting Gresham down bottom here. 3-1 to one in this matchup. The gold, like I said, going to Vayne. But Freak mentioned she has not bought yet. So the aggression in the lane can really be thwarted if Diamond finds himself top at the right time. A lot of mana being used here by Alex Ish. He's going to be thrown in, but Diamond's there once again. The 3v1, the 3v2 situation, rather. Alex not in a good position, not level 6, and he will go down. Diamond cannot assist. And that is, again, them putting the pressure on over and over and over again. And this is really, really good. Lobos with so much crowd control. And the beautiful thing was, they pulled Mistake down to support mid once they sent BB to go back and recall and buy items. That Mistake says, you know what? I don't have too much money. I don't need to buy just yet. It's not that big of a deal. It's only 400 gold. While you go buy BB, I'm going to go support someone else on the map. Let's put a gank together. Let's go ahead and make this happen. Let's make that fight go down. And look at that, a beautiful start. Oh, wow. They get Genjo right out. They are able to take him down Mistake. Picking himself up a kill. BB kind of focusing back there. They may be able to get another kill. They forced a flash on Gosu. That's going to be quite big for them. This lane can now continuously be aggressive, Freak. The mechanic there for TPA was really, really strong. After that first kill, notice that Mistake walked forward and made sure he pulled turret aggro. As soon as a turret hits a champion, it will stay on that champion until he leaves range, no matter what. No matter if someone swings at you, no matter whatever happens, until that guy dies or leaves range, it will stay on Mistake. And so he sat there and said, yes, hit me, hit me, hit me. He, you know, and, and, and Ghost Pepper knew he had to flash to escape that because Vayne would have kept stutter stepping, walking over and swinging, walking and swinging, walking and swinging. He was three hits from getting the kill, forced the flash. At that point, there was too much pressure required. He got out. going aggressive on Darien here. You can see the sustain coming into play a bit as they damage trade equally. You can see just how confident Taipei Assassins is right now with a few of their purchases. Quick Chalice buys going in both lanes of Stanley as well as Toys. The Boots of Mobility onto Maokai as well. Little Ball's trying to get these ganks to happen more often and get them to happen in favor of his teammates. He's been doing a great job. Right now he has four assists. And like I said at the beginning, Freak, when you grab Maokai, it's going to be to set those lanes up for the ganks. You're grabbing all the extra gold. Exactly. It's very ironic that when you pick a, a tanky jungler like Maokai, they're actually called aggressive junglers because they show up for ganks and they fight champions a lot. And they transition into tanks late game. He's so happy to get that gold, of course, because right. it gets his gold generation items really quickly. And actually, instead of that, he's continuing to play aggressive. He's actually going boots mobility early on instead and using that for further gank potential. Now, to go through these builds some more, you're seeing kind of a sustained war there. Stanley going Chalice. Uh oh, here comes Diamond. Toys is on. They are going to lock him down. Command Shockwave comes out. They get a little bomb damage there. The blue buff is going to keep Toys on the aggressive. He is going to be able to throw out a few more auto attacks. Each one scaling with a bit more damage. The ping's top lane is they have Tarek off to the side of it. Stanley trying to heal himself up in that bottom lane bush. Continuously pushing that lane. 63 to 52. The matchup still in anybody's favor there. Nobody really has the upper hand. They both have pretty good regen going down for themselves right now. And you can see him 
really no mana still staying in that lane. Top lane still being addressed quite a bit as the junglers both leaving their red buffs right now. You could see a little bit of aggression towards that top lane. The wards are down for both teams here as they start to really figure out that the, the abilities are up. Everybody's starting to get their ultimates freaked. The team fights are going to start to come to fruition a little bit here. Yeah, I think, and then one big thing here for Stanley is he's actually got Summoner Teleport overall, so he'll be able to show up to those fights much more frequently. I think TPA definitely wants to keep moving in and put that pressure on because they, you know, they, they want to keep the aggression going. They've got enough of an advantage. They can actually keep pushing that advantage. Vayne is such a good duelist. We talked about that in, in the post game to game one, where Vayne was able to go on and do whatever she wanted and just simply be that queen duelist. And so they want to keep putting her in fights where she can win. They want to keep putting toys in those battles as well. He's got enough mana region. He's got good enough cooldowns that he will keep putting pressure on the map as well. The overall team fight here 10 minutes into the game is just better for TPA. I think M5 would love to let this kind of sit down and, you know, just let turrets take a bit of damage and just let that, you know, fight equal out. Now he's in a dangerous spot. He throws down the Chrono Shift. They're still attacking and they allow him to go down. But there's a little bit of crowd control here still. Can they go for it? And they will drop him a second time with that Ignite on. Diamond trying to go for the kill, but Little Boss flashes out perfectly on top of the ward. The teleport comes in from Stanley, and it looks like they may continue to dive. The flash is forced out. So many summoner spells used in that fight, coming into 10 minutes in the game, but TPA grabbing an upper hand there. And they're going to keep that pressure on, that summoner teleport being used, forcing the flash away from Diamond, and that severely limits Diamond's opening potentials. Look at who he could gank. Trying to gank Needly, she can pounce away. If you try to gank Oriana, she's got that command dissonance, and there's not enough crowd control from Alex Ish on, uh, on Zillion to make, make her stop down either. You try to gank for BB, ah, uh, he's got Condemned. There is really no opening for Diamond without Flash. These solo lanes, or really every lane for Taipei Assassins, is safe from Uyghur's pressures. And so they're going to be happy to keep scaling through this game and keep putting pressure on their lanes. Look at the minion count differences. 93 to 59, 83 to 53. 86 to 74, even Needly's winning her solo lane without any aggression from other sides. You know, Freak, I gotta hand it to BB right now. He is connecting so many third silver bolts and just keeping Genjin down in health. Always about 10% HP. Rolling into the turret to take one shot and back out. The mechanics of BB right now are completely winning that lane. Stanley definitively winning his bottom lane, but now allowing Darien to farm. Like you said, don't focus Darien top. We have to free up little balls. That's not where you want to be. Darien, very much like Wicked, can be beat the entire game and still come back to be a formidable opponent towards that late game. So I have to see what he can do now with his turret being the first to fall free. Well, it doesn't really help him very much with that turret down. Of course, Darien now has actually even more avenues of getting jumped upon. But the thing is, TPA, they don't really want to get Stanley fed. They don't really want to shut down Darien. So even though he's available, it's not really the best place to go. Dropping out a turret up top. A lot of focus from Moscow 5 as they know they're losing turrets. They get themselves golden experience to trade that one off after a two turret loss. They're going to be focusing towards mid here. The pings are going down. It actually comes from their own team. TPA is just saying, I think you guys are pretty safe up there. We got vision of Moscow 5 in mid. And you can see BB taking some extra shots. These guys are just really playing a calm game. And this is really, you know, the, the kind of play that M5 needs to, to, to make because, you know, they know that those outer turrets will go down regardless because they know they've got absolutely no map control right now and TPA will eventually kill those turrets regardless. So what they want to do is say, you know what, you'll kill them, I get it. While you're doing that, we're just going to set up dragon takes because, you know, when you're down 4,000 gold, 4,000 gold means a lot when everyone's got like 10k. It's a very, very big margin and, and absolutely TPA is very far ahead right now. But if you, if everyone has... 20,000 gold, or 30,000 gold, or 40,000 gold, then 4,000 gold means a lot less. And they want to reach that kind of situation. So, yes, they'll trade 1,000 gold for 1,000 gold. They'll, you know, kind of get in these, these fights that aren't champion versus champion. You know, they're going for a dragon, the other team goes for a turret. They're going to farm some of the other team farms some. They're going to try to trade those sort of moot advantages and just kind of let the game push on forward. They're going to try to buy, you know, some time and, and, and push themselves through this matchup because they've still got a pretty much impossible to kill Kog'Maw. There are no assassins really here on Taipei Assassins. You're seeing uh, a, a safe build from Stanley. He's got Wriggles and a child. He's not like rushing Trinity for us. He's not looking to uh, chunk someone out with a death cap or go uh, for against his Rage Blade. He's simply there to be a, a, a really annoying sort of force in the mid lane, or sorry, uh, annoying force in his bottom lane, kind of mess with Darien, and just kind of toss heals to BB and let him scale. So uh, it's really up to M5 to farm out their solos, get tanks in the way, and then let Genja get some gold. So Taipei Assassins super bringing out their suffoc suffocation strategy right here. If you guys want to rewatch this, tell your friends. 
exactly how it's done. Moscow 5, a definitive game last time. They really come out huge. Everything was crumbling in their favor. The kills from TPA, like we said, the Stand United and Requiem down bottom last game, those were all going in favor of Moscow 5, those little instances. TPA is creating all of them, for all of these for themselves this game. They destroy top lane, they leave BB now to run, they destroy mid lane, and now suffocating that bottom lane because they knew Darien was going to be down there to farm a broken down turret. So these guys are completely controlling the map. Like Moscow 5 usually does, they get to a lane as soon as it's ready to be pushed. They don't give the other team time to rotate over. And we can see Moscow 5 right along the base of their own uh, entrance, just running back and forth, trying to find where TPA is going and play Cat Mouse. And what's happening right here, though, is M5 is completely stagnating pushes on those secondary turrets. You know, like we just said, M5 knows their outer turrets will fall down, but they know that the middle turrets are much harder to go for. And, of course, as I say that, TPA is about to fill a secondary <laughs> turret here. Uh, but you saw them kind of get forced. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so they push them back, right? These secondary turrets are hard to kill. They're, they're deep in enemy territory. It's much easier to bring reinforcements around. It, it's very hard to take them out without uh, getting pressured. And so you're seeing that over and over where, where M5 is able to defend this kind of situation. Now, TPA is harassing. They're putting some damage down, but they're not killing them off. And, and, and while this is happening, you can just see at this top lane, Genja is just left alone, farming and farming and farming and trying to catch up in this game. Now, certainly nowhere near the kind of gold that Vayne has on Divi, but again, their strategy is protect the X, protect the Kog'Maw, and get him to late game, and when he finally reaches that, that's where, where, where M5 is going to shine. They just need to wait another 10 minutes. Three members of Moscow 5 with 129 minions, actually. All of them the highest in the game right now as they tie each other for that score. And really, nobody's trying to farm it out. Finally, BB breaking that one down goes up to 100 and plus 30. 6 to 1 at 15 minutes into the game. 22,000 to 17,000 gold. You can just see who has accrued the most, and that goes to 56,000 on BB. Vayne being very strong, the Dazzle on to Darien, and they're really just trying to get shots onto this turret. Yep. Now firing onto Darren Creek. The pressure is here in each lane, and they're really spreading themselves thin, but making it work. This is really this is exactly what TP needs to do. Is again, they know their mid game is so much stronger. They will just keep pushing for turrets. This is exactly what they want, and you know, you'll see them keep cycling through. And and they've sent Needly and Oriana as the solos because they're they're kind of the, the most safe. They've got the most mobility. They can heal themselves. They can pounce away or, or, or you know crowd the opponents. They're going to keep sitting in those situations. Lowball's actually here to bait a counter engage, sitting in that rush for a little while, trying to see if they would jump on BB mistake, but that's not going to be the case. They're just simply pushing for turrets as hard as possible over and over and over. And, and again, because M5 wants to stall, TPA wants to close this out. They will simply, no matter how hard it is to do, they are just going to keep pushing because that's the only thing they've got left to do. Now, Free, coming into this portion of the game, however, we see that Moscow 5 is forced out of a lot of these fights. It seems in or out of the jungle, Taipei is bringing a stronger team right now. And this is just because a lot of it is, is honestly gold-based, that their level one team is strong. This is kind of what happens when you bring an early game focused team, but, and like you'll really have with Tarek Malka and such, um, it is, and, and you're not so much with Yorick, who's got, you know, really terrible at level one, is they just want to go for pressure early on, make those fights happen, and they actually made those fights happen. That's, that's the really the thing for an early game team, is you've got to actually fight to do it. Stanley very low on mana, initiating too hard here. His team is really split between left and right. Toys taking a bit of damage there, but they get the damage onto Gosu and Alex. They've done a great job at just taking those cooldowns. Stanley was really caught out of position there, but Moscow 5 knew they didn't have the engage. TPA was forced to run back and forth and make sure he could get out alive. You see Alex each running away, blinking as Genja farms that bottom lane. It's still 154 minions for BB to 122 for Genja. Very much different game for the AD carry here. And this is absolutely going to have to be a game where Moscow 5 adapts to the carry. Yeah, and they've got to just shut down BB absolutely. It's going to be hard to do it, but that's what they've got to go for here. And you're just going to see it be so difficult because TPA are going to be reserved. They're going to be smart about their movements. You're seeing Stanley once again running to that top lane. Now, they don't have a Shen like they had, but they've got a Summoner Teleport, which is just as good. He will shove around that top lane, be very hard to catch with Pounce, with Wriggles, putting extra wards down to make sure he's not watched. And he's just really, really controlling the, mo the, the, the sort of map movements of his opponents. He's going to get nice and farmed. He's going to keep his gold going up. M5 completely controlling Dragons here. This is how they're going to keep their gold up in this game as they try to stall it out and push forward. But you're just going to see constant pressure. These turrets still able to fall. They're finally going to look for their sixth here as Stanley continues to shove this top lane. And now he's finally, 
finally transitioning into an actual fighter. He's got that Fates, the Trinity Force finally coming up next. You know, he went for Chalice Wriggles just to be a sustained monster and to really mess with, with any counter pushes here. But that's going to be the gameplay, is just pushes, pushes, pushes. You know, BB's going to pick up gold on the back of that. that. Even though they've been splitting up and pushing constantly, he's still up there in minions. But, I mean, look at look at the gap now. It's 132 to 158. Genja is catching up. That's exactly what M5 wanted, is Genja... He's going to get closer and closer on those items. He's got Phantom Dancer, but he needs Zerk Graves. He needs Infinity Edge. Going after Alex. He does not have his ultimate up. Stanley able to take him down, but this is going to be the fight between Alex and Di or Stanley and Diamond, rather. Too much speed coming from Nidalee, the escape artist in that cougar form. And we're going to have to see if they go for this now. TPA trying to force down onto the Baron. It looks like it will be theirs. Darian just on the other side, about to throw a ghoul over, but it's not going to be enough. Do they pursue him? No. They looked like they were going to be the side of the wall for another twisted advance attack. Stanley finds no mana for him, though, but it's not going to be any cost for him in that form. Continues the pressure on, gets as much as he can, and really freak what they're doing right now is just keeping Moscow 5 out of their lanes, allowing a little bit of push here, and great job by Stanley for not allowing Darian to back. And this is one of the most difficult things to do, is to actually close a game out. They know there is a team that's trying to stall. They know Genja is just trying, trying to get gold, and they're... And they're tooth and nail defending their secondary turrets because they know as turrets fall, TPA will still scale ahead. No matter how much that Kogma farms, they know if every turret is 150 gold to everyone on the team, they know that Dragon's 190, Baron's 250. If they can keep picking up those margins, they will keep scaling themselves forward. They will absolutely, uh, you know, push themselves farther and farther ahead. And so they're trying to keep these advantages together. And, and with no one getting caught out too much on M5, uh, you know, they're, they're stopping those pushes. But Stanley making a big play actually pushes out Alex Ege, actually makes a 5 on 4 happen, and then baits the rest of the team top lane. TPA have actually created openings on the map. They've finally given themselves these windows to take major advantages and push on through more. Oh, Genja taking so much damage from Stanley, but he's able to trade it back here. He may have enough mana to get this. That W is still on. Throws out the living artillery, but here comes Baby. Slams him against the wall. The Yorick ulti is on, so he will come back to life, but he's instantly brought back down again. Trying to stay in this fight. It is going to be Diamond Prox going down. A huge initiation for BB, and he finally falls. The shutdown going to Darian in this fight. Alex East's chrono shift is down. Darian there to keep that pressure on. Goes to Ken, lock them down under the turret. Stanley gets out of that, and it's just huge pressure from Taipei Assassins right now. Darian is, however, able to clean up a few kills for his team. It's now 3 to 3, a 4 to 3 now. Finally, the last auto attack and double kill for Toys. The ace oh. on the Moscow 5. <laughs> he almost killed Lobos by running a freaking bomb into him. But they did survive that one overall. This turret low enough, they could backdoor it. Toys, yep, there's the shield. Does Lobos come on, dude? Thank you. <laughs> she almost died of the turret as a result there. TPA, flawless team fights. And actually, M5, they did almost pull that one back. Genja got caught out. He took a lot of damage, but they kind of collapsed into that fight really, really well. They nearly turned that one around, but that fight was really carried on the back of the gigantic gold lead that Taipei Assassins built for themselves. M5's power is always team fights. Let's watch that last fight with player audio. Nice. <laughs> 我走了,我走了,我走了,我走了。走走走走。對對對對,這波可惜,慢慢來,慢慢來,他不,應該可以再打,慢慢來,注意一下球女就好。誒,這這一點。好可惜哦。哦。啊,可以可以可以,慢
I pointed out that, you know, Taipei Assassins kind of had a composition that relied a lot on itself. But each lane fended for itself. That composition of reliance is totally out the window. They can all do what they want, and their team composition has become that much stronger, allowing BB to run by himself. He can pretty much 1v3 any situation against this team. There's not enough crowd control to just lock him down. Those dodges by, of him and his mechanics this game have been paying dividends for his team. Right now, 3, 1, and 4, 5, 0, and 5 coming in from Toys in mid. Toys, another key to victory. Get him play, get him fed and play around his uh, his game and strategy. And it's just been huge for these guys. And whenever Stanley gets in trouble, we saw him going into that last fight really tanky enough to take on the cool, cooldowns for the fight. TPA has just turned this one into their favor, now dictating these fights. And on the front step of Moscow 5 Space. Looks like they're going to back off here. Dragon should be coming up quite soon. That was about 17 minutes that it went down. 12 to 4 here. They are in an 8,000 gold lead right now for Taipei Assassins. The good thing here for TPA is that they've got two healers on the roster. They've got Tarek and Needley, both of whom will keep the health bar sustained from that team. You've got three points in the heal of Tarek. You've got, I'm going to guess, five. You've got five points in the heal for Needley as well. So they've got a decent amount of sustain here, you know, plus the Chalice there immediately giving her some nice mana regeneration. I mean, th this roster is is about sieging. And when you consider one of the biggest long-range nukes is going to be Time Bomb, it's a very it's very easy for Toys and Oriana to shield that damage output as well. Honestly, TPA, uh, as long as they've got the mana for it, are going to be near immune to long-range harass. And that's really the only tool M5 has. What M Because what M5 needs to do is, is try to swipe out minion waves, which will be very difficult. They don't have a Nivea or Karthus or, or Caitlyn or things like that. They'll sweep uh, waves out really, really easily. So they're really relying on kind of getting into the fight, taking a bit of flack as they do it, and trying to harass back TPA. But as Taipei Assassins heals themselves back up, they're just going to put themselves over and over again in these long-range sort of siege situations where uh, they're just at odds and they're going to take some damage and they're going to hope to heal it back. Stanley now with the Golem buff is a huge deal here. He's going to have a lot more presence in those fights. So it, Darian, you know, yeah, forced to build a little bit differently this game. We saw him go straight Triforce into that Guardian Angel. Now really not building himself tank either. Where are they going to find that front line for themselves to come from, Freak? Stanley is getting quite tanky, and they're really able to just come into these fights a lot stronger. And the difficulty here is that, you know, they're going to hopefully rely on Diamond to be a tank, but, uh, you know, with him going Mana Mune into a Trinity Force here, they don't have that front line. You heard uh, Dan talk about the fact that the team needed a Frozen Heart, uh, and, you know, and Reynolds Omen was right. in that mix as well, onto Olaf in, in WE versus CLG. They, they need, very directly, a Frozen Heart in this matchup. They, they need that to help shut down BB on Vayne. No one else, is, except for Toys, is a gigantic damage threat. Stanley, very utility-based. He added a, a Spirit Visage there just to be a, a, a bigger tank. He's got Mercury Treads overall. He's honestly a, a just a, a mobile, low-cooldown tank trying to be as disruptive as possible and toss heals onto his team. It looks like he may be able to get out of this one as he just gets into that bush, that passive, going to give him some movement speed. And you can see him turning around knowing the aggression. TPA now going on to the Baron. It looks like they will be able to grab this one down. Will be nice for them. They wait on it, though. They can get some damage. It will stop the Baron from healing. They keep that tick in. They're just waiting for them to come out. They're really baiting this fight out. They know that M5 is too spread out. Coming in from the side, it's going to be Diamond. He tries to steal it on Udyr, and he's not going to make it out alive. BB takes him down 13-4. to A huge push by TPA coming up. And that was really smart how they played that one out because they kept trying to bait Diamond into Flash over the wall. They did not want to risk that smite. You saw, again, you know, with, with the WE CLG match, where they had control over Baron, they knew they'd probably get it, but Snoopy was afraid of getting out smited. And they went, okay, we'll push it. Okay, hold on. All right, now now Kog'Maw got, got vision. Okay, but Wards are swept. But, oh, okay, go back in. And they bursted it down at the last second. You saw Diamond's Flash come in after Baron was killed because they just psyched him out enough to get full control. Hero Freak, oh my god, coming in so big. Genja, Chrono Shift down, but they continue to fight him. Genja will come back up, but he's going to be obliterated once more. No, he makes it out towards the top side. We do see the Darien falls. Genja forced away from and then back towards his turret. A double kill coming in. Huge game for BB here as he comes in to finish off this one with his team, focusing down onto Diamond, but it should be the inhibitor. They're going to gain some huge ground here as they turn Moscow 5 base into shambles. Moscow 5 not exactly flustered, but I think this is the first time we have seen them not be able to answer his strategy. The suffocation from Taipei Assassins just too much. Huge damage coming from that Oriana Shockwave, but she is forced to bring it back. No, yes, coming out huge toys just back down to his team and it's going to be that second that first nexus turret the second nexus turret the nexus now a game three moscow five 
forced to defend on the fountain, and it's going to be a huge matchup. Your first semifinal match going into a best of three between Taipei and Moscow Five. And what a match that was from second number one TPA coming out with the strategies jumping in and, 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 you know, invading onto the jungle. You saw them kind of run in there, put a ward down, really put down traps and saplings, make sure there was no counterattack from M5. And, and again, that level one team so strong. They said, okay, you're not starting blue. We right. know you can't start blue because we warded it out and made sure you weren't there. Cool. We're going to go back to our own golem buff. Make sure Maokai has that. Make sure he's got mana to spend and make sure that we're happy here. Cool. Okay. Now let's move forward. Now we're going to invade your red. Y you know, we're going to kind of suffocate that a little bit, make sure nothing was available there. Right. And they completely did. They, they suffocated Diamond's Udir. Now Diamond did make a nice move. He actually stole Lizard buff that entire time. They had the awareness. They had the mobility to say, yes, okay, you can get that buff. We know where you're going. Because cause M5 the same way. They had actually uh, warded blue themselves, and they knew just where TPA was going. But the team collapsed together. TPA spent a lot of time, four men strong, you know, just jumping in there and saying, yes, we're going we're gonna to go, we're going to invade, Lizard is ours, let's steal stuff away, it's going to be fine. Again, they still had the other golem warded, so they knew where a lot of the movements were available. And on the back of that, Stanley, he went and sold the bottom lane, and it had summoner teleport. So even if something went wrong, he could teleport in onto a secondary ward and make that a full five-man push, no matter what happened. So TPA's level one from the get-go was controlling. They got the kill on Azira early on, that first blood, thanks to stuns and condemn and everything else. A lot of damage available. They just kept pushing forward yep. and forward and forward. And, and again, I'm surprised that M5 decided to fight them there because that level 1 team was so strong, because there was so much disruption. A level 2 Maokai just tossing out crowd control. Vayne, just on the back of that, probably going to do a little bit more damage than Kog'Maw will at level 1, just for the extra mobility yeah. and just the extra moves she can make and, and, and heal at level 1, a little bit better than cleanse at level 1 overall. Just so many moves coming out, and just TPA completely capitalized on the back of that. They kept the pressure on the entire time. Yeah, a huge, and I gotta give it up to BB for this game. He played each lane he was in, since he was pretty much in every lane after taking that first turret, amazingly, hitting every third bolt he could, pretty much just you could just compare it to Sivir Dazzling and hitting, or, or Tarek Dazzling and hitting the Sivir Boomerang. You block out your lane so early and they're not even able to come back whatsoever. They kept Kogma under the turret. Although he's a good farmer, they just could not come back. And we have more of that coming up next. Game 3 will decide which one of these teams will compete at the World Finals on the stage right behind us. Everything is on the line and we'll be right back with a quick few messages after this with a special interview.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Rivington the Third with me as always, David Freak Turley here, still live from the Galen Center here at USC Stadium. And we're here to discuss a few of the matchups, and we're lucky enough to be joined by Solo Mid's very own A.B. Carey, Reginald. 